This is the Alta X, made by Freefly Systems. It's a heavy lift quadcopter that has become the industry standard for filmmakers looking to carry large camera payloads. Its versatility extends far beyond the entertainment industry. With a 35 pound max payload capacity, there aren't many jobs it can't handle. Other common use cases include everything from LiDAR mapping to package delivery. Multi-rotor drones like the Alta X have become prevalent over the past few years because they are extremely stable and have the ability to take off and land vertically. These characteristics make multi-rotors the most convenient option for getting a payload up in the air, but this convenience does come with a cost. When it comes to applications that require long-range flights or extended endurance, fixed-wing aircraft have a clear advantage over multi-rotors due to their superior aerodynamic efficiency. Fixed-wing aircraft generate lift through their wings, which allows them to maintain altitude with minimal power usage and fly longer distances using relatively little energy. In contrast, multi-rotors use their rotors to generate lift, which requires a significant amount of power just to stay airborne, leaving less energy available for forward propulsion. Back when I used to work at Freefly, I was doing a lot of long-range multi-rotor flights with the Alta X, primarily for testing new long-range radio systems and for shooting aerial time lapses like these. All this got me thinking. I wonder if it's possible to take the principle that makes fixed-wing aircraft more efficient and just copy and paste it onto a multi-rotor. So that's exactly what I decided to try out. To make a big, lightweight wing, I started by laser cutting some foam board ribs. Those all got attached onto some carbon spars in the center, and then I covered the wing with some foam board as well. The whole wing assembly got attached onto the Alta X through some bearings, so that it can pivot around the spar. There are some hard stops around the pivot point that prevent it from rotating up all the way. This is so that we can force the wing to have a positive angle of attack, which is necessary to generate lift. Good morning! I'm out here at the flying field, and today we're going to do something a little unique. Now I'm doing this to see if it's possible to extend the maximum range of the Alta. Now this could be useful for applications like package delivery or something like that where you need to fly a really long ways. Right now I'm giving it like a 50-50 chance. My argument against this working well is that all I'm really doing is adding weight and drag to the airframe. And that's obviously not going to increase its maximum possible range. But anyways, let's start testing. So what I'm gonna do is make a waypoint mission that goes back and forth down the field at different speeds. And over here, I have a current sensor. So that will tell me how much power the aircraft is using to fly. So I'm gonna do the waypoint mission without the wing installed, save that data, and then attach the wing and fly the same waypoint mission and compare. So let's get started. So I'm going to continue the mission and the drone will go do its thing. The benefit of doing this test during a waypoint mission is that the drone is using its GPS to very precisely control its speed. If the power consumption of the drone decreases with the wing attached, we'll know it's more efficient because it'll be traveling exactly the same distance and at the same velocity. With each pass down the field, the velocity of the waypoint mission would increase. This way we'll be able to see what speed the wing helps the most at, if at all. Okay, I've got the wing on it. The angle of attack might not be set correctly. Um, it's definitely going to be way too steep of an angle of attack when we're flying at really slow speeds. But once the aircraft is going faster, like 16 meters per second, it'll pitch forward more. And hopefully this angle of attack will be much shallower. So yeah, I think the wing is definitely going to be stalled at the slower speeds because the angle of attack is way too high. But anyways, let's try it out. That is wild. So I'm going to be ready to throw this thing in position mode if something goes wrong so that it'll just stop the mission, but I'm going to start it. Here we go. Continue mission. Oh, ho, ho. this could be exciting. There it goes. The wing pitched forward onto the hard stops. So far, so good. So as it starts going faster and faster, what will happen is the wing will be lifting up and back quite a bit, so the front motors will do less and less work as the speed increases. As you can imagine, this wing has a lot of drag when the aircraft is just pivoting in a turn. This makes the flight controller have to fight a lot harder to hit its angular rate set point, which in turn makes it a little less elegant and a little more terrifying. These are 33 inch propellers, so having something this large and powerful go unstable is no joke. Oh, sketchy. Whoa, it's starting to get weird. I don't know if I like that. 
Whoa, yeah, it's not doing well. Okay, I killed it. That was getting crazy. I'm going to slowly come home now. I think the angle of attack is just way too high. That was a little iffy. Whew. So yeah, by looking at the little flappy things, we can clearly see that the wing is in a full stall, which is uh, not good. That's just basically creating a ton of drag and no lift. So I just adjusted these tube clamps to change the angle of attack pretty significantly. Now I haven't really talked about the reason I have the wing pivoting on bearings like this. The main reason is because in my mind, in my mental model, the worst, most catastrophic thing that could happen here is that the aircraft pitches forward too much and the angle of attack on the wing goes negative because then that would just like bite into the oncoming air and suck the whole aircraft nose down and probably result in a crash. So by having the wing pivot, I'm preventing that. But I added hard stops because we need those to hold the angle of attack positive as it's going through the air to generate lift. So this is probably uh, a bit excessive of a pitch angle. It would, it would be going pretty fast at this angle. The oncoming air will push the wing up like this. So see this angle of attack is just barely negative. But like I said, this is a super aggressive aircraft angle. So I'll lower this just a little bit. And now you can see that the hard stops are keeping the, the wing at pretty much a perfect angle of attack. And then if the aircraft pitches forward a ton, um, on accident or whatever, this will never go negative. The angle of attack will never go negative because it'll just blow back and it, it can pivot. So that's like a safety measure. So I've adjusted the angle of attack here. Let's do another flight and see how it does. It's hard to say, but it kind of looks like the wing isn't even hitting the hard stops right now. The oncoming airspeed might not even be high enough to push it back all the way. And also I'm sure the props are sucking it down quite a bit, so it might not even be flying yet. Looks like the angle of attack is definitely... Woo! Whoa! Okay, that's enough. I'm killing it. wow -wee. That was getting nuts though. So at this point in my mind, it kind of seems that a wing this big has too many like unintended aerodynamic consequences and it can get into a, an oscillation too easily. Now I was hoping that this drone would be big enough to just kind of like overpower the effects of the wing, but I don't think that's the case. This wing has a lot of drag and a lot of lift and it can really tug the drone around. So let's take a look at the data and see if we can notice any difference. So by looking at the streamers on the wing, we can tell that it's not stalled. So that's good. The angle of attack looks to be about perfect. But then you can see here, it just starts going nuts and oscillating and then it stalls and then the stall just <laughs> increases the oscillations and it gets super wonky. What's happening there is that obviously the multirotor doesn't know that it has a giant wing on it. And there's probably some crazy eye term buildup going on or something like that. And it just oscillates and goes nuts. So that's kind of a bummer. Ooh, whoa, it got really crazy right there. But now I'm going to look at the logs and see if there's any difference in motor RPM versus speed. Unfortunately, the current meter that I had installed didn't log. So I have to look at motor RPM instead. So here are the motor throttle signals from the flight controller during a single run down the field. This is with the wing not attached. Each color represents a different motor. Roughly 1100 is the minimum and 1900 is full throttle. The average during our flight was 1466, which is a little under half throttle. One weird thing that you might notice is that they don't line up at all. Each motor is running at a very different throttle level. Now typically with a multi-rotor in hover, we would expect the throttle levels to be roughly the same on all four motors. In forward flight, it would be safe to assume that the front two motors should be similar and the rear two motors should be similar, but it's likely there could be some discrepancies between the front and back pairs. This could be caused by differences in weight or drag distribution across the airframe. But this, this is just wonky. It's probably due to the fact that I built this particular Alta-X out of scrap prototype parts, and it has a history of being power looped by the Rotor Riot crew and hacking through tree branches in an attempt to rescue an FPV quad. 
All this abuse has probably thrown the motor clocking out of alignment, resulting in an imbalance of thrust required to keep the drone flying straight and level. So again, here's no wing, and with the wing attached at a shallow angle of attack. The average throttle level is 7% lower compared to having no wing, so that's a pretty good indication that the wing actually does improve efficiency a bit. The craziest thing here is that one of the front motors was idling the whole time. This is super sketchy because the motors are the only thing controlling the aircraft. So when one or more of them saturates, or desaturates in this case, you're going to lose a lot of control authority. Here's the data for the run with a steeper angle of attack, where the wing was stalled the whole time. The average PWM was actually 6% lower than it was with no wing. This suggests that the wing was still creating some lift, despite the stall. The big obvious difference with this graph is that the throttle levels are all over the place. This suggests that the wing was a big source of instability and the flight controller was working hard to keep the aircraft going straight and level. Here's the pitch angle over the course of the flight with no wings. The error is roughly plus or minus one degree, and the pitch angle with the wing attached at the shallower angle of attack. The error is closer to plus or minus two degrees, so not a terribly huge difference. With the wing at a steeper angle of attack and in a stall, it's just all over the place. So the next day, I came back to the field with a working current logger so we could finally get some definitive efficiency data. I repeated the exact same waypoint missions with the wing both present and absent, and here's what we get. This graph is looking at the total power of the aircraft over the course of the entire mission. Each spike is where the aircraft stopped and turned and then started forwards again. The wing led to an increase in efficiency at each one of the four speeds I tested. The biggest improvement in efficiency occurred at 10 meters per second. Any faster than that, and the drone started using more energy just fighting for its life trying to stay upright. Any slower than that, and the wing was just not doing as much. It's also interesting that the power draw was pretty consistent at all four speeds when no wing was attached. Drones are typically more efficient in slow forward flight than when they are hovering, but the efficiency drops off as you start to pick up speed. 12 meters per second is reasonably fast, so I would have expected the power consumption to go up a little bit, but it didn't really seem to change all that much at all. It's probably because the Alta-X is very big and can do 12 meters per second quite easily, so it's still within its higher efficiency speed range at that point. So looking at the final numbers for the 10 meters per second run, the Alta-X was consuming an average of 1,543 watts with no wing and 1,170 watts with the wing. That's a 24% improvement in efficiency, which is incredibly impressive if you ask me. If you take the averages of the power consumption over the entire waypoint mission, the wing comes out at 21% more efficient, and that's even including the turns where the wing was just dead weight. Pretty good. So why don't all multirotors have wings? Well, some of them do. Most VTOL, or vertical takeoff and land aircraft, use multiple rotors during takeoff and landing, and a wing during forward flight. This is pretty much the same as my Alta X here, but the difference is that mine doesn't have to do any sort of transition maneuver between hover and forward flight. It's just ready to go. Also, mine is approximately 700% more sketchy. The Alta really does not like having a giant wing on top, and this is even during a morning with zero wind. Flying this thing in any amount of wind would be disastrous, so it's definitely not a practical way to extend the range of your Alta X. But it was a super fun experiment at the least. For me, it was also a great way to get the creative juices flowing and start thinking about other potential methods for improving aircraft efficiency. If you found this video interesting, or have a passion for drones, cameras, and robotics, then you should look into pursuing a career at FreeFly Systems. As a company, they are committed to pushing the boundaries of what's possible at the intersection of art and technology, and are always on the lookout for talented individuals who share their vision. Joining FreeFly Systems means joining a team of innovators and creative thinkers who are dedicated to developing cutting-edge technology that has the power to transform industries and inspire people around the world. I learned most of what I know now about drones from my five years at FreeFly and I would probably still be there if it weren't for this YouTube channel. But I can honestly say it's an amazing place to work with amazing people who all share a passion for creating awesome stuff. If you think you might be interested, check out freeflysystems.com careers to explore available positions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.